we are here to talk about European citizenship. Emily, what is European citizenship? European citizenship is when you have a citizenship of a country in the European Union. So there's 27 European Union countries. Um, and it gives you a whole lot of rights. Um, it gives you some responsibilities um, and it gives you a whole lot of freedom. Right, and uh, this is a question that get asked uh, on our Facebook page a lot actually, because people will say, oh no, there's no such thing as Europe, EU citizenship, but there is, right? It's, you have a citizenship of a country in the European Union, but your passport will say European Union on it as well as the country that you're a citizenship, like a citizen of. Right, right. So thank you for clarifying. And there are 27 uh, different ones. And today we're talking about German because that's what you specialize in. So people that work with Polaron uh, will encounter your smiley face along the way and your com competent approach. What do you do at Polaron, Emily? Um, I do eligibility assessments most of the time. So I actually have a look at family trees and determine whether people can apply or are eligible for German citizenship or not. In terms of benefits, uh, could you just briefly tell us um, what is the benefit? Uh, and the most obvious one, of course, is that for someone that's Australian or, or um, American, let's say, or Canadian, um, you can only stay um, in EU countries for up to 90 days. With European citizenship, you can do what? Tell us. You can stay in any European Union country for as long as you like. Um, you have to show that you're able to support yourself. Um, if you've stayed in a European Union country for a certain amount of time, you'll you have the same rights as the citizens in that country. So, for example, if I lose my job and I've been working in the Netherlands for years, then the Netherlands will support me during my unemployment. So you get a lot of rights um, that are given to the citizens of specific countries. You are also given the right to free movement. So you can move through the European Union as you please without visas or any sort of restrictions. Uh, you can study in the European Union. So for local students, university fees are always cheaper. Um, so you get to study in Germany, for example, there's no university fees for undergrads. Um, you pay, I think, $300 and you get a yearly bus ticket and that's just the service fees for the university and you get to study whatever you want to study. So um, that's a huge benefit. You can work everywhere. So you have working rights in all EU countries. Um, you can actually bring your family across as well. So you, if you have a wife who's not a European citizen, they can come and they'll have exactly the same rights as you have. You have a lot of human rights, a lot of consumer rights. Um, they're very strong about protection of individuals in the European Union. So oh, including, a huge, including huge. privacy and, um, and, and everything else, of course. Yeah. And um, the other benefit is, um, you know, for some people, it's the healthcare um, and uh, ability to travel to a country uh, that's on your doorstep. So basically, uh, it could be, I said to somebody, Sweden in the morning, um, Spain in the afternoon, right? Because everything's so yeah. close. But of course, Emily, for a lot of people, uh, it may, may start off uh, with um, having a, a life plan or an option B, uh, given our turbulent times, but it becomes something else, right? Because uh, I think in the last uh, couple of months, we've had a lot of successful cases. What happens to a person once they become a German citizen on paper? What, what, what does that mean? For some people, it's really important because it sort of goes back to their ancestors and they've always identified as being German and getting German citizenship is sort of a piece of a puzzle in their history and their identity. Um, others um, have sort of aspirations of living in the European Union or working in the European Union and just opening those doors um, and so it's been hugely beneficial to everyone that's received it. And they've all sort of gone their own path and done it for their own reasons. But um, everyone's sort of, you know, now part of a new, like a new country and sort of new culture. It's, yeah, it's hugely exciting. It gives you uh, kind of, um, you know, another part of you that you may not uh, know you have. But in terms yeah. of... Um, 
people's journey with Polaron. You mentioned, Emily, already that you um, mostly uh, work on people's eligibility. So basically what, what that means is that if you have German heritage, you'll probably contact one of our um, citizenship experts and then they will gather your information, uh, they'll get you to fill in a family tree and then all of that goes to you. Is that right? Yeah. That's and what right. happens after that? So then I look at all the information and German citizenship law is hugely complex. So we need a lot of information from the inquirers to be able to determine whether or not they are eligible. But once that's done, I send it back to the sales team who will then discuss further steps. Um, then the sales team hands them over to operations um, who then guide them through the journey. So I have a few clients of my own and I help them with gathering documents and um, I do research for them if it's required. And then at the end, we put it all in one big folder and we send it off to the um, Bundesverwaltungsamt, which is the administrative body that actually double checks that the citizenship can be handed out and issues the certificate. So it's a long process sometimes, sometimes a really fast process. Um, but it's always like interesting to sort of discover things along the way. And there are, of course, several pathways to citizenship for Germany. They, they have had um, uh, a change of laws not that long ago. And as you said, it's a very, very complex picture. So what we do with people that are interested in exploring it, we, we look at in, in a lot of detail into their background um, in, in relation to the, that pathway. And then we, we give them uh, pretty accurate information about whether they qualify or don't. Um, and if they're willing to work with us, we take that case on and we uh, do everything uh, basically uh, for them. Um, but sometimes you probably have to give people bad news that they don't qualify. Is that right? Yeah, that does happen sometimes. How do you handle that? Um, is that a, like a sad occasion or are people grateful for the information they got uh, along the way? I think people are grateful for the information. I think also by filling out the family tree, people really discover things about their ancestors that they didn't know. Um, so we have a lot of young people who are applying at the moment and you can really see that they've had to ask their parents about their grandparents' past. And I think that in itself is a quite valuable experience for people. Yeah, and that um, I guess that reconnection with your um with your roots, with your heritage, um, with the language and with the documentation and information is really, as you say, valuable in that um, even if you don't pursue your citizenship right now, you might later, or if you don't qualify, at least you've ended up with accurate information and you know where you stand. So yeah. um, I think that's, um, that's also very beneficial. Um, so Emily, we're running out of time, but I did want to thank you for your time this morning. And we're going to be doing this um, little um, catch ups um, every week, covering different aspects of citizenship, because it is, as you say, a very, very complex um, area of the German law. Uh, and a very exciting one, because they've kind of opened things up a little um, recently. Uh, and, and they're trying to right the wrongs of, for example, women being discriminated against um, in, in this context. So we'll be covering all of that in the coming weeks. Uh, but in the meantime, happy summer and thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Eva. Thanks.